Welcome to the Mary Lewis Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your answer, to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions being offered this evening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week at the same website where you registered. I'd like to turn it over to our presenters now, and first up will be the University of South Carolina. Okay, awesome. I think I'm all set there. Um, just takes me a second to get it all set up. But hello, um, my name is Kate Henshi. For those of you who I did not get to virtually meet yet, um, I am the admissions rep for the University of South Carolina down in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, though my background might be a bit deceiving to you at the moment, I am not actually physically in South Carolina at the moment. I am actually regionally located in Connecticut, um, and I work with students exclusively in New York State and Connecticut. Um, I myself am from Queens, and so I know the area that you are in. Um, I know what is around, and I'm very jealous of the pizza that you very well could be having for dinner tonight. So uh, just a couple of things about South Carolina that I wanted to fill you in on today. If I can get it to go forward. There we go. Um, so as I said, we're located in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I like to think of it as an ideal location because it is a really urban environment, like a mid-sized city. Not so much what you're going to find in the New York City area you're in, but a little bit more akin if you've ever been kind of more to like Hartford, Albany, something like that, where it is nice, a little bit of a city. You do have tons of places to, to eat, art galleries, um, museums. We do have our own, you know, the off-Broadway shows that travel through every year. We have our own repertoire. We have one of the top 10 ballets in the country as well. Um, but, you know, everything a big city has on a much smaller scale is usually what I like to say. Um, we are a really ideal location smack dab in the middle of the state of South Carolina. We're about an hour and a half from the beaches and an hour and a half from the mountains. So truthfully, you have everything either right where you need it in walking distance of campus or just a short trip away. Kind of breaking down what our student population looks like. We have over 27,500 undergraduate students on our campus right now. Um, our students come from all over. So the freshman class right now is a little bit heavier in the in-state population, uh, about 56%, but this is actually the highest in-state percentage that I have seen since my time at South Carolina. It's typically actually a little closer to 50-50. Um, with our out-of-state areas, um, you know, we have a lot of people that'll be surprised by the fact that we have so many out-of-state students on our campus, and New York is actually really growing in there. Um, it's actually one of our top four states at the moment for where students are coming from and applying from. So when you come down, you will definitely be hearing and seeing a lot of those familiar New York things. So, you know, those Mets and Yankees baseball caps, um, you'll be hearing those familiar accents, and you know, you'll hear people complaining about the pizza as well in South Carolina. And yes, I did just bring up food twice in a two minute period. I am hungry and I have not had dinner yet. So you'll have to excuse me. Um, and our students are studying all different things. We have a hundred, over a hundred majors at the undergraduate level. And if you factor in the minors and cognate areas and all this different specializations, there's over 300 different degree paths. We break them down in these different colleges and schools, but everything is on the same exact campus. Even our law school is on the same campus. Um, the only thing that is separate is our med school and it's only about three miles away. So if you're interested in pursuing a professional track, uh, you can call Carolina home for as long as you'd like. We also have the top ranked um, public honors college in the country at our South Carolina Honors College. But my 
favorite by far thing to talk about with University of South Carolina is all of our opportunities to learn beyond the classroom. Um, so me, myself, I have always been the kind of person that learns by doing. And lucky for me, South Carolina has a very similar mission because um, when it comes down to, you know, the grand mission of the university, it's all about preparing our students today for the careers and the jobs of the future and where you're going to be, whatever you're doing, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Um, so it's the classes that I took at South Carolina that I'm still learning from and I'm still applying to my job now and I know will still be relevant in you know 20, 30 years. And so parts of those classes involve, you know, whether it's required internships or the ability to study abroad. Um, you'll do some different research, you know, you might conduct your own research as an undergraduate or get involved in the ground level with a professor or graduate student. And overall, just have that ability to embrace your education and take it down the path that you want it to go down. And I think I would never be allowed to get away with doing this presentation without talking a little bit about the spirit of a Gamecock. And so, yes, our mascot is the Fighting Gamecocks, and we are Division I school in the SEC. Um, we have some really great athletic teams out there, but even more than the teams is just the sense of camaraderie and school spirit in general. Um, there's one thing that you have to know, it's that if you have a, if you have a South Carolina alum anywhere nearby, um, and you talk to them, they will talk on and on about how much they love the University of South Carolina. Um, we have been test optional this past year and we have not made a call for this coming year yet. I am going to pass it along to the next presenter. Um, I do have my contact information up here if you wanna take a quick screenshot of it, but I'm now going to pass it along. Thanks guys. Excellent, thank you so much, Kate. Um, so next up is High Point University. Can you guys see me now? I'm going to go with yes. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Lanny Skelly, and I am your designated counselor exclusively working with Long Island students for High Point University. Um, and I am just going to tell you a brief synopsis of High Point today. And then at the end, you will have my contact information if you get a, if you like a little bit of the taste you get um, and want to learn more. So High Point is actually located in High Point, North Carolina, um, and we're centrally located in North Carolina within 20 to an hour and a half of the three largest cities in North Carolina. So Greensboro, Raleigh, and Charlotte. So, you know, we're close to the mountains, we're close to the beach, you can get to the city, really anything you want to go to explore, you can do in North Carolina from where we are located, including enjoying the up and coming surrounding High Point area as well and our beautiful campus. So at High Point, we are built on a four pillar academic success model, starting with academic excellence. Here you can see listed um, our top 10 freshman majors. You're going to see some of the common ones, you know, business, exercise, science, psychology. You'll see a few unique ones as well. Interior design, pre-pharmacy. Um, we have a really student focused environment. So we're looking at an average student to faculty ratio being about 15 to one. And all of your classes are guaranteed to be taught by faculty. And if there is a TA on site, they're really only there to serve as a supplement um, to you in the class while doing classwork or for extra help while outside of the classroom as well. Another one I always really like to point out um, is at the top, you'll notice that our number one our number one top major is undeclared. Um, we recognize it's really, really hard at 17, 18 years old to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, so we kind of have a joke that undeclared is our number one incoming major. Um, and that's really okay. We actually have a special program specifically for that student called Project Discovery. And what it is, is it gives you an opportunity as a student to take, you know, a year, a year and a half and really suss out all of your different interests and see, you know, 
what is the best major for you? Or is it a double major situation? Or is it a major minor situation? And really suss it out and figure out how we can best support you and foster you as a person. Because your college experience is about fostering you as a person, not as a major. And the best way to provide you with the best academic experience is to give you the opportunity to explore all of your academic options. So the other way that we are able to support you is with um, top of the line and unique learning uh, environments. Um, so part of the way we do that is with these state-of-the-art academic facilities for experiential learning opportunities. Um, here you are going to see pictured our cult planetarium, which is one of my favorite places on campus. Um, but we also have our human biomechanics and physiology lab, our newly built Kane Conservatory, um, our news and radio studios, and our bb and executive boardroom where we do things like mock shark tanks and mock boardroom meetings as well. Um, so the idea behind all of these spaces is to really give you the opportunity to get that hands-on experience starting from day one to get you to that ultimate goal of getting the job at the end of those four years. Another way we do this is by putting you in unique educational experiences with people who are who are industry leaders, so giving you access to them, like Byron Pitts, pictured here, who is one of our people in residence, um, who you can see actually working with our current students in one of our newsrooms. Um, we also have partnerships with people like Mark Randolph, who was the co-founder of Netflix, as well as Steve Wozniak, who was a co-founder of Apple um, and has a project on campus called The Woz Project, um, where he actually works with students students who are interested in exploring what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Um, another notable one is Sint Marshall, who is the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks and actually invites students to come to Dallas and shadow a week in the life. So really not only getting the opportunity to work on campus, but getting to go off campus to make those connections for those internships and those ultimate jobs. Um, this is also supported in our internship programs as well as um, undergraduate research, which you can start as early as your freshman year. Now, we would be remiss, you know, to not talk about student life. You are obviously coming to college for a college experience. Um, and we do have a very vibrant student life on campus. About 95% of our students do choose to live on campus all four years. Um, so we're able to have a lot going on. We have 16 NCAA Division I teams, including lacrosse, which you can see pictured here, um, as well as basketball. That's a big thing in North Carolina, along with baseball. Um, we also have 200 plus clubs and organizations on campus, including Greek life, club and intramural sports such as bass fishing, um, track and field, jujitsu is a really popular one, and religious groups such as Young Life or Hillel, um, if that is something that you're interested in. So I know all of you um, are not quite at the time where it's time to start applying, but you need to have an idea of what's going on. So I kind of want to talk you through what some of our application plans are and give you an idea of what the deadlines were this year so you can kind of anticipate what they'll probably be in the future. Um, so we have early decision, which is our binding. That was a November 1st for a November 23rd decision. Early actions are non-binding, which was a November 15th for a December 16th notification. And then regular decision was a March 1st deadline. Um, and that is being rolled out as those decisions are being made. We really take a holistic review when it comes to our application. Um, we are test optional and we have been historically. So that was nice that we didn't have to make that adjustment when it came to this year. Um, but we do look at your GPA. We look at those test scores if you choose to include them, those essays and your short answers as well. And those recommendation letters um, all become very important, including your interview. So the next thing you want to do is, you know, schedule a tour of campus. We also have virtual options online if you want to take a look at those. Um, and last but not least, reach out to me. I'm here to talk to you, whatever you need. So take out your phone, take a quick snapshot of my contact info here. You can find my email, my phone number, as well as my Instagram handle. It's Landy underscore HPU, where you can see um, current things happening on campus and also watch student takeovers. Tomorrow, I actually have one happening. Um, so it's a perfect time to start following following me to start watching that. Um, thank you guys so much. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Excellent. Thank you so much. Our next presentation is from Nova Southeastern University. Okay, welcome future sharks. My name is Brooke Stevens. I work in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions here at Nova Southeastern University. Um, we are a private selective research institution located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 
Um, I hope you enjoy my um, sand snowman behind me. <laughs> so I know New York has been getting crazy weather lately. <laughs> so a little bit about NSU. We actually were founded first as a graduate institution. And when we were founded, it had all of the doctoral level programs. So it really wasn't until the late 80s that we developed the undergraduate program. So we are the largest private institution in the state of Florida, but of our 20,000 total enrollment, only about 5,600 are undergraduate students. So not many universities have that ratio of undergraduate to graduate students. And that is really key if you are interested or maybe need a degree or a career beyond a bachelor's degree. We have a lot of ways for you to get there with us. One example, we are um, one of three universities in the entire country that offers not one, but two medical schools. We have both the DO and the MD med programs. Now, of our 5,600 undergraduate students, they're coming from all 50 states, over 100 different countries. And I like to think that we have the best of both worlds since at the undergrad level, the average class size is 17, but you're gonna have all those resources of a larger private school. Now here are nine different colleges uh, that our undergraduate students can choose to study from. And all of our colleges are vertically integrated, which means that our professors are teaching at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Some of our most popular programs do include biology. Um, a lot of the students going to the medical track, dental, for example, or nursing. And then marine biology and natural sciences is very popular because of our location in South Florida. But then we also have several degrees um, from education, business, criminal justice, and even a law school on our campus. Now I want to talk briefly just about three really unique programs that NSU has to offer. And the first one is dual admission. Dual admission is the chance for our students to reserve a seat in a graduate, professional, or doctoral level program before they graduate high school, technically. So you could have a seat reserved for you in our dual doctor of osteopathic medicine program, for example. We have this in over 30 different tracks. Um, Really anything related to medicine is super popular between optometry, dental, physician's assistant, uh, physical therapy, but also we have this in business programs and education programs, psychology related programs. So there's really something for everyone. Now the next accelerated program that we do offer is the Fischler Academy. So if anyone here is a future educator, I recommend you check out the Fischler Academy since it is an accelerated four year track to earn an undergraduate and master's degree in education. Now we do have reciprocity agreements with over 30 different states and New York is one of them. So you will be able to go back to New York to teach if that's what you wanna do. But graduating from this program will also guarantee you a job placement in South Florida counties. So I have had students in the past come down here for four years, complete the two degrees, work down here for a year or two, and then go head back up to New York to teach. So. Uh, this is a really great accelerated program and it does come with a really nice scholarship attached to it. Now, similar to this, we also have this for business related students and really this one's geared towards those entrepreneurship students. This is called our Huizinga Business Innovation Academy. Again, four years to earn a bachelor's and your MBA, a master's of business administration in just four years. Now, this program is an intensive four years because it will include two summers. Um, but outside of that, it's going to have internships and ability for you to start businesses on campus. And then at the end of it, these students will actually get to uh, pitch their business ideas to NSU leadership and kind of like the TV show Shark Tank, can you pitch your business? And potentially they earn up to $20,000 in startup funds for their own companies. So if you have any students that are inter interested in starting their own businesses in the future, they're really entrepreneur students already, this is a great accelerated program. So I like to highlight these because I know medicine is one of the things that we're really known for, but we have so many great options beyond just medicine programs. Um, but really, I think something for everyone. So I did not put on here my contact information, so I apologize, but what I'll do is I'll um, put my email in the chat for you all. If you do have future questions, you're welcome to email me. I am the specific representative for students from New York coming to NSU. So they are more than welcome to reach out to me at any time. And we are having uh, virtual and in-person tours. So if you're visiting at all during breaks, let me know and we can definitely get you scheduled for a tour. Excellent, thank you so much, Brooke. And our next uh, presentation will come from the University of Tampa.
There we go. Let me turn my video on first. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. My name is Alexandra. I am the admissions counselor from the University of Tampa, working with students from Long Island. All right, let's make sure we can get this full screen. There we go. So there's my contact information. If you have any questions, happy to chat with you. I know it's kind of early in the process, um, but it's good to start now. Um, we are holding in-person tours as well, so definitely happy to schedule, help you schedule that. Um, just to give you some background information about the University of Tampa, we're a medium-sized school with just under 10,000 students. We have students from all 50 states and over 130 different countries, so we do have a very diverse student body. We are located right in Tampa, Florida. I know it's kind of hard to tell in that picture, but on the other side of that river is downtown Tampa. So our location is probably one of our best selling points because you have access to the city while still having that traditional college campus feel. You really have that sense of community. Uh, we are a private um, school, meaning that we are the same price for in-state and out-of-state students. We're independent, meaning we have no religious affiliation, um, but we do have a chapel on campus and we are a liberal arts school. So outside of your major, you'll be taking classes in a variety of different subjects. We are NCAA Division II and we have 20 varsity sports. Um, actually, our women's beach volleyball team is D1, um, so we're very proud to have them on our, uh, here at our school. A little bit about the academic side of things. We do have over 200 areas of study to choose from, tons of internship opportunities, especially being right in downtown Tampa. Um, you can see there our ratio, faculty to student, up, student is 117. All of our classes are taught by professors, none are taught by TAs or grad students. Average class size is about 22. Um, our largest classroom on campus only holds 85 seats, so you won't find any giant lecture halls here. Um, you'll have that relationship with your professor where you'll be able to work with them. Um, all of our professors hold office hours outside of their classroom hours. They're definitely accessible. And 90% um, of them hold a PhD or terminal degree, which is the highest degree they can get in their field. So they can definitely be great resources when it comes to finding internships or even job opportunities after graduation. Uh, other ways um, students can get involved outside of the classroom, we really push for an experiential education, kind of that hands-on real world opportunity. There's tons of research opportunities, both undergrad and graduate levels. Um, many students will have internships right in downtown Tampa and they're able to walk to them because we are so close. And we're actually the only school in downtown Tampa, so it definitely gives you a leg up on the competition when it comes to applying to those internships. If you're interested in study abroad, we do offer over a thousand different programs to choose from in about 60 different countries. There's three different ways you can study abroad. You can do the traditional semester or year abroad. We offer travel courses, um, which you take on campus and then over summer or winter break, you travel for two to three weeks to that respective country with your professor and classmates. And we also have a partnership with Semester at Sea. Think Sweet Life on Deck. You'll be living on a cruise ship for the, the semester, traveling all around the uh, world, traveling to seven or eight different countries as you go. And while you are here on campus, we definitely want you to love where you live and learn. We have 27 different dining options. Um, we have a Starbucks, a Chick-fil-A, an Einstein Bagel Brothers, uh, Dairy Queen, um, and then our ultimate dining cafeteria is kind of the main center on campus, but lots of other options to choose from as well. We have over 300 clubs and organizations that students can get involved in, everything from academic-based clubs, hobby-based clubs, student government, Greek life, there's a little bit of something for everyone. One of our most popular clubs is the Beach Club and they do trips to the beach. It's only about 20 minutes away to Clearwater Beach, which was rated the number one beach in the United States by TripAdvisor. So like I said, Tampa is just a really cool city to be in. Plus we're Champa Bay right now with uh, the Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl and the Lightning winning the Stanley Cup. So Tampa is a fun city to be in right now. Um, to mention um, residence life, about 65% of students live on campus, about 92% of freshmen do, but at no point are you required to. We just encourage it as it helps with the transition to college. Lots of students live right in the immediate area, either downtown or in some of the surrounding neighborhoods. We do have an off-campus housing coordinator that can help you find affordable housing in the area if that's something you're interested in. To mention the application process, we have three decision deadlines or application deadlines, I should say. All of them are non-binding. 
first early action is in November, second early action in January, and then our regular decision is in March. But we do accept applications on a rolling basis. Our requirements for the application, um, we will need your official high school transcript, a personal essay, and at least one recommendation letter. For um, this year, we were test optional. We did not require the SAT or ACT to be included with applications. We're 95% sure um, that we will be test optional moving forward for next year, but we will make that final decision later this spring. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and finally, my contact information. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to connect with you. Um, there's my email there and hopefully you can come down for a campus tour and get out of the snowy weather and down into the sunshine. Thanks everyone. Excellent, thank you University of Tampa. And next up is Kaiser University flagship campus. Hi everyone, can you guys, I hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> uh, my name is Heather Ginsberg. I am the admissions officer for Kaiser University's flagship campus. Um, Kaiser University has actually been in the state of Florida for over 40 years. And we actually have quite a few campuses uh, as far north as Jacksonville and as far south as Miami. However, the campus that I represent and the traditional four year residential campus is the flagship campus, which is located in West Palm Beach. There is some of my contact information that you can see there, but I also have that at the end. So don't worry about getting it down right now. The flagship residential campus is a small, not-for-profit private institution. As I was saying, it is our traditional four-year residential campus. Uh, the one thing that Dr. Kaiser has made a very important um, staple of our university is that we are putting our students first. That is our mission statement. And the nice thing about that is that that's what drives us um, to be dedicated to our students. Uh, we have small classes and um, we are have several different career focused programs. Um, some of the most popular programs that we have are business, um, anything in the healthcare industry, uh, including nursing criminal justice, psychology, golf management, and that's just to name a few. Our residence um, halls are all apartment style suites and that goes for all students from freshman through senior year. So there's no difference in um, dorm style rooms. Uh, we have 24 hour security. We have one entrance in, one exit out. They come with Wi-Fi and cable TV compatibility. Um, we also have more than 20 NA IA sports on um, our campus. And we are about five minutes from downtown West Palm Beach, as well as the beaches themselves. In downtown West Palm Beach, you'll find all of our shopping and we have buses to get you there as well. These are some of our uh, bachelor's degrees that we have at our flagship campus. Um, you can see some of the popular ones that I mentioned there, uh, business. We have an accelerated uh, program for our business degree, um, which is the three plus one. So you can graduate within four years with your master's in business. Um, our newest additions are the cinematic arts and applied engineering. <clears throat> we are accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And again, some of our uh, advantages of the Kaiser University uh, flagship is the small classes, um, flexible class scheduling. Um, we do have additional campuses actually in China and Nicaragua. <clears throat> uh, these are some of the sports that we have that are part of our NAIA um, <laughs> sport uh, teams. Uh, you can see there are some of the men's sports. Uh, football has been with us for about three years now and they've been doing really well. We did just add the equine program. So you can see our equestrian um, team members there as well. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that we actually have a pre-vet program. So our students that are enrolled in our pre-vet program um, can take advantage of either being part of the riding team or again, having that uh, experience at our stables. Our stables are about 30 minutes away and students get to go there and experience um, what that would be like working with all the animals, 
um, and we have some great uh, contacts with our future internships for those students as well. The um, men's swimming team actually uh, just won the national championship for the third year in a row. Um, these are some of our residence halls. We actually have two residence halls. One is newer. Uh, that would be the one in the bottom right hand uh, corner. That's our lakeside um, residence hall. And on the left, you see a stoffer. Uh, they're a typical two bedroom apartment with some common living area. Uh, the newer ones were actually just opened this fall. So they're really nice because everything is still pretty brand new. Uh, the admissions for Kaiser University, you'll see on the left the requirements there, um, which is a 2.7 or higher GPA. Uh, for the SAT and ACT as well, uh, with everything that has gone on, we have become test optional and we have our own entrance assessment that we can administer to students in the event that they need to do so. For our nursing program, our exercise science, our biomed program, our pre-vet program, we do have um, different requirements, 3.3 uh, GPA, 11.50 SAT, 23 ACT, and then again for our own entrance exam. For the nursing um, students, you would also need two additional, um, excuse me, two letters of recommendation and a Skype interview with the Dean of Students. Um, the process again is, uh, fill out an application, make sure you're sending in your transcript, um, any uh, uh, letters of recommendation, and then we would talk further then about what the next steps are after acceptance. Uh, that is my contact information. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I would like to add that actually we are having a virtual open house this Saturday, the 27th at 11 a.m. It's about 45 minutes and it's a great way to get to see your campus um, and what that's like. You get to talk with admissions uh, staff, faculty and student panel. So uh, you can register at KUCHawkNation.com and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you for your time. Excellent, thank you so much. And our uh, final presentation this evening comes from Lynn University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Justin Lubor. I work for Lynn University. I'm one of the senior assistant directors of admission. Um, and give me just one second. Let me go ahead and share this. Who is it from Lynn? Justin Lubor. Awesome. All right, cool. So just for those of you who aren't sure um, a little bit about us, this is our campus right here, um, just part of it, um, including our brand new university center. Um, obviously, as you can see, lots of green, lots of areas to just relax, hang out, enjoy our South Florida winters compared to your winters up there. Um, to kind of give you an idea a little bit more about us, we are located in Boca Raton, um, we're sandwiched right between West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale. We're about an hour north of Miami. We're about 20, 30 minutes north of Brook um, with Nova uh, just south of us. Most importantly, though, of course, we are about five miles to the beach. You literally make a left and a right, um, take that down, and you are right there. Um, with our yearly temperature being about 75 degrees. So hopefully you guys are staying warm up there and staying not too far away from the snow. Uh, or just to kind of give you an idea about who we are as a, as a university, we are the number one most international students. Um, about 25% of our students come from outside the United States. Um, a little bit around 100 different countries are represented um, and we'll get into all those numbers as well. Uh, Boca Raton, Delray Beach, and West Palm Beach, those are some of the towns that are just around us. Uh, according to Forbes, that was the 12th growing, 12th fastest growing metro area in the United States. And we do have a nationally recognized core curriculum, which would be the equivalent of your basic, you know, freshman, sophomore level classes. We just changed it up a little bit. Um, and if you have more questions about that, we will certainly be able to go over that. As we mentioned before, truly a global community with 97 nations. Um, become, so when you pull into campus, if you haven't been, you actually see all 97 different flags that are flying at one time um, to show all the different nationalities that are on campus. We do have 47 states and territories represented. About 50% of our students come from outside the state of Florida, um, from the 47 other state, from the 47 states. And New York is actually our most popular out-of-state state, and then more importantly, Long Island itself, with Nassau and Suffolk County right there. Uh, we are about 18 to 1 student-teacher-faculty ratio, and about 2,700 undergraduate students. Now, one of the things that separates our university from a lot of the other ones is the way that we've reimagined college. When you come to campus, you're actually handed an iPad Pro with all your books preloaded onto this. Comes with the Apple Pen, comes with the uh, keyboard like you see in the picture. 
Uh, and it's really kind of cool because literally it saves you about $2,500 a year just on books and supplies by having this. So when you go to camp, when you go to class, all you're going to be doing is bringing your iPad with you. And again, all your books are going to be preloaded onto this. You can actually kind of, you know, have the screen just like it is right here where half your notes on the left and then you can work on the right hand side as well. Now, one of the ways we also try to help save money is our three-year accelerated bachelor's degree. Now, what we do with our degree is all you do is just add one extra class every single semester. And by the end of your third year, you've already taken those 30 additional credits that Lynn University is already paying for. So it saves you on average around $50,000 by doing the three-year program. And again, all you're doing is just adding one extra class every semester. Now, as I mentioned before, our brand new university center, which was located in the picture, is one of my favorite places to go on campus. Uh, most importantly, because as Kate was saying before with South Carolina, from South Carolina, food is a big part of it. Um, I'm the big foodie, uh, for those of you who do know me. And, you know, in our brand new university center, we do have our 24-7 dining hall. Yes, you did hear that right, 24-7 dining. And the best part is it's unlimited as well. So you can come and go as much as you please. Um, there are no certain amount of swipes that you need or get. Um, it's unlimited. You swipe, let's say it's 12 o'clock and then you get hungry at three o'clock. You can just go walk right back in. Or if it's this time right now, you already had dinner, but you're still a little hungry. You can, of course, go walk back in and no problem. It does also have our campus store and our career and alumni connections um, and our dean of service and, of course, our study abroad. Uh, we've been pretty much every single place the entire world, um, and hopefully we can get that going again uh, very shortly. Just to give you an idea of some of our employment, these are just, of course, just a little snippet of who, you know, some, where some of our place uh, students have gone, uh, including Apple, Marvel, NBA, uh, the Dodgers, CNN, um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of, you know, you know a little bit of disc, a little bit of information right there. Uh, housing on campus. Uh, we do have seven, six resident halls here on campus uh, for freshmen and, of course, for upperclassmen as well. Um, and you can see these are some of them right here. Um, if you do come for a tour, uh, you will be able to see the dorms right there on our campus. This kind of shows you a little bit what they do look like inside with our singles, doubles, and our triple rooms. Um, a lot of our triples, though, because of COVID, have become doubles. Um, and again, we can talk a little bit about that later on as well if you have any questions. We do, of course, have uh, Division II sports. We are Division II with University of Tampa, with NOVA, um, and the Sunshine Conference. Uh, we have 25 national championships, 45 conference titles, so we're kind of a big deal when it comes to that. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of some of our COVID response, uh, we do have daily screening, and we actually do have free testing, rapid testing on campus at all times. Um, for application checklist, we are on the Common App or we have our own application, whichever you prefer. And we are going to be test optional. We actually have been for the last six years. So this isn't something new. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about that, just let me know. Some of our deadlines, just like everybody else, November 15th is our big early action deadline. And then, um, which means if you apply before November 15th, you're guaranteed decision before the holidays. Um, but again, it is not binding. It just means that, you know, you hear a decision. And then, of course, you do have until May 1st. We are open for tours, um, you know, just come on by. And the thing is with our tours, they are done a little bit different where it's only one-on-one -on -one individualized tours. Um, so it's only you and your family uh, getting to visit. This is my contact information. So if you have any questions, I am the one that does work directly with you guys, uh, with students from New York. So again, please feel free to shoot me an email, text me, give me a call, um, whatever is easier for you. Um, and of course you can follow us on all the social networks. So thank you guys so much and look forward to hopefully seeing you guys on campus. Excellent, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our uh, presenters this evening. We do have a little bit of time for some Q&A. So if there's any Q&A from the audience, please do put that in the, the Q&A box for our representatives. Um, but I'm gonna kick things off with a question for all of our representatives. Um, and if you could answer in the same order that you presented, that would be great. Um, but our question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, so I think um, starting out, I would say, you know, use your resources when getting your information. You know, if you know people that go to the school you're looking at, ask them, use your school counselors as much as possible, but also use us as counselors, you know, that's our job. We're experts on our school. So, um, you know, so we're paid to do, ask us questions. 
Yeah, my big piece of advice I always say is don't be afraid to be selfish in your college search. You know, this is the time when, you know, you're not being dictated by where your parents want you to go to school. You're not being dictated by your school district. Um, this is really about you and your college experience. So um, really, you know, think about your non-negotiables, you know. Do you want to have to share a bathroom with other people? Do you really have to have a Starbucks on campus? Do you want to be on a bubble campus? Do you want to be able to walk around the city where you're in? So really think about those things. And maybe that takes looking at a few different places to figure that out. But don't be afraid to, you know, talk to your counselors, whether that's in your high school or your college counselors and say, you know, these are the things that matter a lot to me. And find out who can provide that for you and who can't, because that's why we have so many different options. Um, you know, not only in our country, but around the globe as well as so that every student can really find the best fit for them. So don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and say, you know, these are the things that need to be in my college experience. And going off of that, I always like to add that the college search process is all about fit. And fit will mean a lot of things. Um, of course, academically, it needs to be a great fit, but it also needs to great, be a great fit socially, personally, um, even financially is a conversation to be had as well. So definitely think about fit. And I think when you are seeing colleges virtually or in person, sometimes you just get that feeling too of the fit as well. So definitely take your time to explore and utilize your resources such as your admissions counselors like all of us. Brooke took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that fit is really important. Um, I would say being able to visit a campus, I know right now is kind of difficult, um, but hopefully in the fall we'll be able to travel again back to normal. Um, so I would say being able to visit the campus is a really important part. Can you actually picture yourself there on campus? Yeah, so honestly, I have to kind of agree with everyone that um, with the great fit. Um, you know, that's going to be the most popular thing, you know, but again, it's based off of you, you need only you understand what you're looking for. If you're looking for a big school, if you're looking for a small school, uh, if you're looking to be five minutes from the beach or be, you know, in the middle of nowhere, you know, sometimes you want to try to get away from everybody. So again, it's most importantly, just what's going to be the best fit for you. Um, honestly, try to get on campus. Um, I know most of us are open for tours. You want to make sure, you know, it may look great on pictures, but when you step foot on campus, it may be cliche, but you'll know if it's the right fit or not for you. And also use us as a missions counselor. Like everyone was saying, we're here for you. Um, you know, we're your biggest resource. We can tell you what to do, what you're expecting, what the GPA test scores, what we're looking for for applications. And most importantly, just enjoy the process, relax, it's going to be okay. And again, just use us because we're going to help you every step of the way for you. Excellent. Thank you so much to all of our presenters for your answers. We're just about out of time. So I'm going to uh, wrap us up by saying thank you for joining us. And thank you to our college and university representatives. Uh, when this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, and there are, uh, you know, more sessions left in this college fair, so please do sign up for those. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other sessions recordings. So thank you very much. And this concludes uh, this session of the college fair. Have a great rest of your evening. <laughs>